Let's take a moment to really understand the uh, the trajectory of the brush uh, brush system inside of ZBrush. There is a specific goal that ZBrush is going for, and all of the features work in combination towards that goal. The general idea is to empower sculptors to create form as, uh, as with as much control as possible, but still keeping it freehand. So, in general, let's just take this sphere. I've just loaded the um, the default sphere project. I'm going to turn the floor off. I'm going to turn symmetry off. Just press uh, X on the keyboard. We started ZBrush, or ZBrush started with the standard brush. That was the first brush that we all got in and had to work with to create form. The process of creating form with the standard brush was a little bit um, uh, multiple steps. It was more derivative. Notice that I'm, in order to create this cube, I'm sculpting just one blob, adding some points to the top, pushing in, pressing Alt, and then I'm going to have to come in and press Shift and just smooth certain areas. And I have to be very careful where I smooth. But smooth becomes a very important part of the process here. And if you mess up and uh, need to re-sculpt that, you just kind of have to push in, smooth again, add form, smooth again. You can get really good results with just the smooth brush. There's no reason that you can't, and it is still used by people to because of its really kind of natural effect, the, the process of smoothing something out um, as you're sculpting really lends to the naturalism of it. So I'm going to go into geometry, divide this one more time. And we're doing good, but it's still a little lumpy. And that's where ZBrush 2 was perfect for creating organic materials, orcs, things like that, that you know are lumpy. But if we wanted to get in and create hard edges here, that would be very difficult. The way we would have created a hard edge here is we would have gone into the pinch brush. So I'm going to press P just to find all my P brushes. Whoa. And now just going to pinch that geometry in. And pinch that. The problem with this approach is number one, it really screws with your topology. And number two, it's still not a straight line. It's still not that precise. So that's when in ZBrush 3, the clay brush came along. The idea being to allow you to add form very freehand without any regards for topology. And so now I can stroke along the surface, press Alt, and I can get a somewhat decent planar quality. Pressing Alt. But it's going to average things out. So see how it's kind of creating a nice even slope? It's really hard for me to get a straight line in there. I can combine clay brush with the standard brush. And then together, you shift, smooth some areas out. Be careful where you're smoothing. And that's a cleaner line with a lot less effort. Cleaner line, a lot less effort. And that's really, that's ZBrush uh, 3 right there in 3.1. And then when we got into ZBrush uh, 3.5, that's where instead of using the standard brush, we would get in 
and start to use the clay and the new trim brushes. So I'm just going to add a bunch of clay onto the surface here. And then I'm going to switch over to Trim Dynamic, which we've looked at. And I'm going to use Trim Dynamic to really help me establish nice clean planes. Now these planes are going to be much more precise than clay uh, and standard were going to really allow me. Notice that it just, by its very nature, will just sink in and find a consistent plane. I'm not doing anything beyond just clicking and dragging left and right on the surface. But this trim dynamic has the same problem clay has. It tends to create these averaged edges. So that's where we need to come in with a brush like Trim Adaptive. And Trim Adaptive we can use to kind of enforce a plane. You gotta find an angle that works and then it will enforce that angle. Okay, nice clean straight line. And just keep working that surface. Now, if this is not the angle I want, I should come in with the clay brush and just try to push in somewhere where I'm going to get the angle. Come back in with Trim Adaptive and use it to enforce that plane. Nice clean cut. Now that's super clean edge. Then you can use Trim Adaptive on the top, press Alt, smooth out the bottom pressing shift and we have a progression so here we started with the standard brush we got into clay and trim dynamic and we had a little bit more control a little bit cleaner of an edge and now clay trim dynamic trim adaptive and we're able to get super clean edges really sharp. Now with ZBrush 4, not only do we have the trim brushes, but we also have the clip brushes. So now we can do things like add in form with the clay brush, and then come in with the clip brush, like let's say a clip uh, curve, or really a clip rectangle. Let's try clip curve first press and hold control shift and just define a line that's going to be cut nice clean edge define the same line along the bottom in this case though I'm gonna press alt so that it actually shrinks things to it there we go and now we can look at this from below and repeat that. Now careful of doing that same stroke in, in places you need to come in, define your angle, you can press a space bar to move that curve and then cut. come in with trim dynamic if we want create its own flat plane or in with our clip and you're there so we're in a constant progression of working with freehand tools that just started out intuitive and simple and then more and more they were made more powerful and more features were added to allow you to still work with a freehand method but with more control and precision in your uh, in your strokes and in your form